Hello, this is Gio. Hey, look what I have here. I have a realistic CD player from the late 1980s. This is model number CD-2400. And I just picked this thing up, plugged it in, and it kind of works, but not quite. Okay, so I do have it plugged in. Let's go ahead and power it up. Let's open up the CD tray, and there you can see that works. We'll go ahead and put in a CD, just like that, and go ahead and close up the tray. You can hear something happening, but then it spits it out. We'll go ahead and try it again. And something sounds like it wants to work, but it just keeps on spitting out the CD. So we're gonna open this thing up and see if we could actually fix the CD player today. Okay, so we did unplug it, and the first thing we need to get inside this case, and so there are actually four screws, one, two, three, four, all Phillips, so we'll go ahead and remove those first. And so with the screws removed, it's a little tricky getting this case out. You actually have to kind of pull it out on both sides kind of lift up the tabs and then it kind of hooks in like that and you kind of wiggle it out carefully. You can see how it's kind of lipped like that so you actually have to pull it out to get the cover off. And so this is the inside of the CD player. Okay, so with the cover off, I went ahead and plugged it back in. I wanna see how this works um, with the cover off. So we'll go ahead and power it up and we'll hit the tray and you can see the tray come out. Let's go ahead and put it back in. All right. Looks like there's a little bit of a spring here that sort of moves. This drops down to uh, cover the CD. And so I don't necessarily see anything that's not working. Looks to be a gear here that controls this plate here. And everything seems like it's working. Let's go ahead and put in a CD. Go ahead and put that in. And something's kind of struggling with, you can kind of hear the sound difference. Like it wants to do something, but can't quite do it. Okay, so fast forward, I have been sort of fiddling with this, trying to figure out what could be causing the problem. And I kind of want to show you one thing. So if I, if I close the CD in and then push down here, now works. So there's something about uh, this, this lever here that's not fully engaging with the CD. And I think if I just hit play, it should play. I don't have any speakers, but it seems to work fine. Uh, number one, two, three, everything seems like it's working properly. I'll have to plug it into some speakers to test this, but I'm still concerned about this, just the mechanics of it. So let's go ahead and remove it. It ejects okay. Bring it back in, and it's struggling again. So fast forward again. I've sort of been focused on this plate here, but looking at this gear, if I go ahead and put in the tray again and move this just a little bit, that actually engages the plate. This gear doesn't seem like it's fully turning clockwise to engage this plate and fully support the CD. So I think the issue might actually be in this gear. And then focusing on this gear again, you can see just moving at a fraction of the inch really engages that plate. And uh, after playing with this for a little while, you know, this issue's not constant. It's actually periodic. I've actually put in the CD and it, it works fine. So there's something about this uh, gear that's sticking just a little bit 
so it doesn't fully go counterclockwise and engage that plate. So just looking at this gear, I don't really see any teeth missing. I don't really see any obvious damage. It could just be a lubrication issue possibly, but I really can't get into there and see. Um, looking at this, it looks like I first have to remove this plate to get to that gear. And it looks like there's a single uh, screw, a Phillips screw that might be holding this down. So we're gonna take this off and see if we can actually remove this upper uh, plate. And it is unplugged right now. I don't wanna shock myself. So I take this off with a little washer up on top. And it looks like, there's a spring here I don't wanna, looks like I might be able to just rotate this out Is it attached to anything here? I don't think it's attached to anything. I, uh, there is a bar that's attached to the gear itself. Let's see if I can actually get this out of here. Nope, oh, that spring did uh, come out. So before I move forward, uh, so this spring was actually in this little slot right here. And then there's another little bar, that little metal bar right there, that looks like it engaged in this, these little two forks right here. So just have to remember that. And then that center plastic piece right there actually was centered right there. So as long as we're aware of where everything goes, we can continue with our dis dismantling. So it didn't look like there was anything electrical that connected to that plate. So I think this should work again. I just plugged it back in. Let's see what the mechanics looks like. And there you go. That, um, that gear actually moves the CD tray back and forth. Just like that. So you can see how it works like that and then when it is fully shut uh, that there's like a space between the teeth right here that kind of fits right there so remember that position and with the tray out you can see that there is a belt right there so it might be a belt issue i think that belt is actually driving the gear so i also noticed that there's a switch here on the side of the gear. So when the tray is open, it uh, engages the switch in one direction. And when it's closed, it engages it in the other direction. So I do wanna remove this gear, but it looks like I might have to actually have the tray opened for it to be removed. Yeah, I think I might need the tray open. So we'll go ahead and open it and remove this gear. So I did unplug the power. So let's see if we can actually slip this gear off here without removing the tray. See if we can get this thing out of here. And yes, looks like we can just slip it out. Go ahead and inspect this gear everything in the gear looks okay it's just a plate on the bottom here so the gear looks like it's intact no teeth missing and so with the gear removed it looks like I could just move the tray back and forth like that and so let's I kind of want to focus in on this belt that's right there okay so you can see the single belt there that looks like it drives so you see this gear right here, that looks like it drives that main gear and that is attached by this little belt which is attached to the motor underneath. Now the belt looks like it's still in fairly good condition but it does have a little bit of springiness to it. This is the only thing that I could think might be the main issue so I'm going to go ahead and remove this belt and see if I could have a replacement and put a new belt on there. Now this would be easier if I removed the tray, but uh, I'm not sure if I can remove the tray that easily. I don't wanna break anything. So we'll keep the tray on there and just use a tooth toothpick to see if we can remove this, this belt. And there you go, there's the belt. So it does look like a standard, just a square belt. Uh, I think I have a pretty good match. Uh, this was the old one, this is the new one. 
You can see the new one is just slightly smaller. Probably this one's stretched out. Uh, the thickness is about the same. So we'll go ahead and replace it with this new belt and see if we get improved performance. Okay, so as I put this new belt on, I wanna be careful of this switch, which is here. This gear actually probably could be removed, but I think I'll keep it in place. I'm, I think I'm gonna install it on the motor side first. And then carefully bring it over. Gear, make sure it's in there, and then slip it in its track. There you go. Okay, so this top gear, you can see it kind of has two little, a little plate right here. This actually activates the switch right there when the trays open it rotates counterclockwise and so it engages the switch in this direction so I just want to make sure that it's engaged in that direction put it in here I think that's correct and then hopefully I have this in the right position all right we'll go ahead and put the screw back in Plug it back in and see what happens. And it shut all the way. It activated that switch. Activated that switch. I think it's in a good position. And now to reinstall the top plate. Again, the spring goes in there, I believe. So let's go ahead and stick this in through here. It's in that, it's in that, good. We installed spring. And there, it's installed. So let's go ahead and put the screw back in and see if it actually functions. Okay, so we plugged it back in, power's on. And at least, based on what I'm observing right now, it seems to function okay. Let's go ahead and put in the CD. Shut the door. It worked just fine. Go ahead and play it. That's good. Change the tracks. Everything's good. Eject. Put it back in. And it looks like we fixed the problem. plugged it into some speakers and it seems to be working just fine. So let's put the top on and call it good. So I'm putting on the top. I do want to make note that there is a little bit of a notch here that's not on the other side. That's for this little piece right here. So just make sure you put the top back on properly. And try to get this in here. There you go, and replace the screws. And there you go. We have successfully repaired this realistic CD player. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen, and even consider subscribing to my channel. I have many more videos to come. Bye-bye.